Hello, hello, my name is Sofia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled Geolocating Data Using Only One OSINT Tool. What happens when you have to geolocate a photo or a video and there is no available Google Street View or panoramic images to help you out? Sometimes you'll have to find the coordinates of locations so remote that there are no available imagery to help you navigate. For that, we need to resort to using satellite imagery. There are a decent number of satellites orbiting Earth, taking snapshots of our planet every few days and collecting them all for open source access and analysis. They provide an endless supply of data and are definitely worth learning how to take advantage of their massive collection. But sometimes you don't even need recent satellite images, old ones would suffice, assuming that the landscape hasn't changed that much. And that is what we'll be using today. The data. Last week, I came across a post on Telegram that contained two images and a very small video of just 19 seconds. The data showed a partially destroyed Toshka missile, so this one. The caption mentioned the name of the village and the region in Ukraine where the missile ended up. Below are the two photos, so this is it, this is what you have. And then the video, found on the link above, is quite short and is just a person walking towards the missile. Below are the screenshots of the first and last frame of the video. So I can actually show you the video, there's literally not much more than that. Person is walking, there's a missile, you can see a fence, some trees, there's another white fence, there's some houses, more houses, some poles there, and that is it. There's like a crossroad, some dirt path, some grass that at some point was probably green, and this is it. Nothing else. So, first frame, last frame. The Ukrainian caption visible on the frames of the video, so that one, says this that I am completely unable to read, but it translates to Chenehiv region. Such a missile was shot down today by our air defense in the village of Desnyanka. This is all we were given. Is it hard? Yes. Is it impossible? No. And honestly, it wasn't even that hard. <laughs> Analysis. First thing we need to do is to analyze the image as much as possible. I know it's easy to just look at it and say there's a dirt road, fence, trees and some houses. Every village has the same thing and without something else there's nothing we can do. Well, you're wrong, obviously, that's why we're here. Let's put our Sherlock Holmes hat on and really look at the image. Every single detail matters. Some will be useful to find a place, some will be useful to get our confirmation, but none of it is useless. So let me bring that photo that I have here so I can describe it whilst I am reading. So starting from the left, we see a white fence that at some point turns darker. So you can see there, it just goes darker. This is possibly a gate. The fence then resumes and keeps going, stopping two thirds of the length of the white house. So you can see this white house here and the fence doesn't go all the way to the end of it. The left residence has a prison, here you go, this one, shaped dark roof. No windows or door are visible from this angle. Across from this house, there's an emerald colored building. So you can see there, right at back there, it's barely seen, but it is there. Also possibly a residence with a similar roof and fence around it. In between them, we see a pole. So there's a pole there. It's not clear on which side of the road the pole is located. Behind the emerald colored house, there are only trees. So you have trees there. On the right side of the image, we see dry vegetation. There you go. Hard to guess the width of this area, but it's either the same width as the dirt road or slightly wider. At some point, a wooden rickety fence, look at that, rickety fence, starts with two trees on the other side of it. So have one and two trees. There's perhaps more than two actually. <laughs> a bit ahead, before the road, we see another big pole, this one there. Across the street, there's another fence, likely also made of wood. Behind the fence, we see another building with a dark roof, smaller in height than the emerald one. Right in the middle, there's a crossroad separating all three buildings we just analyzed. And that is it. Let me take the picture away. So I can tell you now that there is no Google Street View or 
any panoramic images anywhere in this small village. And you knew that already, of course, because it's an introduction I wrote and that I can actually prove it. So we have here, so Googled the name of the village. We know that this is the Chenihiv Oblast. So this is it. We get our little pegman and this is nothing there. Absolutely nothing. It stops here. There's no panoramic images. There's no Google Street View. There's literally nothing. So off you go again. So let's get our new best friend, Google Earth Pro. This tool is a must have to any OSINT analyst and it's free to download to any operating system. And yes, that's even on Linux. If you don't want to download it, you can just use the web version, although with some limitation. First, let's navigate to this little village in Ukraine called Desnyanka. So you just put it for that. You just open Google Earth Pro, write the name of the place on the search bar. It's quick and easy and you just get there. And I can show you that is it. This is Desnyanka. You can zoom in, you can move around. Look at that. Google Earth Pro is amazing. Love it. Off you go. And this is our town, not a huge city with lots of buildings and roads, but certainly not so tiny that it would be fast and easy to find the location of the lost missile. So if we think back on the analysis of the images and videos that we did a few minutes ago, what could be seen from this aerial view that could help us? The answer is usually interesting buildings, odd colored roofs or road shapes. In this case, the buildings are not interesting. The roofs are just dark black, so let's focus on the road shape. You might remember that I mentioned it was a crossroads. Let's check out one more time before proceeding. So here you go. There's definitely road that way and definitely road this way. So now let's check out below how many crossroads there are in Desnyanka. Three. That is it. There are literally only three crossroads in Desnyanka. Not looking too hard now, is it? So look at that. Let's see if we can find them. We can have one there, we can have one there, and one there. Nothing else is a crossroads, it's just intersections. Time to zoom in on all of them and look for our buildings. We know that there will be houses in three of the corners of the crossroads. We also know the roof shapes of two of those buildings, and we know there are at least two wooden poles near the crossroads. With a bit of luck, we might even spot the fences. So let's start with the first one on our list below. So we'll start with the one right at the bottom there. It's definitely no. The houses are only on two of the sides of the crossroads and they're too far from the center of it. There is not where the missile is. Next. Now onto our crossroads number two. On the top right of the crossroads, we can see a huge fence here separating the road from the property. We know that our target area has vegetation on both sides of the road before getting to the fences on each side. I also don't see any poles, so this is also not our location. So next. And now our final guess, crossroads number three. At first glance, I can immediately see this is the correct location. So let's compare every single detail below to see how I got to this conclusion. First thing I do is use Google Earth Pro's option to rotate the image so it's faced the same way as when the video was recorded. It makes it easier to compare and less confusing when trying to picture it all in our heads. The red arrow below points in the direction of the footage. So when the person was filming, they were looking this way and they were walking this way. The confirmation. So the crossroads, we can observe below how the crossroads is not completely straight, making a bit of a curve just before the center. I have slightly exaggerated the dip in yellow to better visualize what I mean. So you can see my very, very poor attempt at drawing a line that explains what I mean. So you can see how it goes a bit wobbly, isn't it? A bit wobbly. <laughs> The left fence. On the left, we can see the image from the video showing the white fence in green, then a darker gate in purple, then the white fence resumes. On the right, we can also see a lighter colored fence, a darker break in that fence, and then it being resumed. And now we jump to the left house. This house has a prism shaped roof that I marked in orange. It's also visible how the house keeps going 
even after the end of the white fence. So here you go in purple. So you can see the same. So we have the roof here and the fence is already finished, but there's a space there. Then go to the tree. This might be a bit harder one to spot, but it's also there. Just before the left house starts, behind the white fence, there's a tree. The tree is also seen on the aerial view, mainly because it was full of leaves when the satellite took a snapshot of the area. So we know that this video was filmed in early March, so it was still winter. That's why it's like that. The left pole. We could see how there was a pole between the white and the emerald house on the left. At first I couldn't quite see which side of the road it was. Now looking at the aerial view it's much clearer. It's on neither side. It's kind of in the middle of the road. Why it beats me? I'm not a town planner. What a ridiculous idea. <laughs> Why is it even there? The emerald house. We won't be able to see the color of the building from a satellite view but we can still see the shape and color of the roof and the location in relation to the road and the white house. So you can see it's across from that, across from that, and you have the pole in front, so there's a pole, and it's across from this house. The vegetation on the right side of the frame, where the missile is located, we can see that there's a decent amount of space with vegetation in between the dirt road and the fence. Below, you can observe it as well. So you go all the vegetation there and the road is here and then you'll have the fence there. The other pole. On the right side of the image we can see another big wooden pole on this side of the road, on the right side of the road. Below we can see how it's also present in the aerial view. So look at that. It's quite tiny but you know you'll just learn how to spot all these details. The other building. On the right side of the image, again, Across from the street, we could see a building with a much lower roof than the other houses. You can see it's much lower than this one's. It's hard to see some detail on it due to the tree branches in front, but we can still see something is there. You can see something is also there, clearly. Geolocation. Now that we have established the location, we can make a good guess of the coordinates of the Tochka missile. I would say that he was, or still is, located around the area marked below. I'm hoping it's not still there. <laughs> okay, so conclusion, and that is how I geolocated a Tochka missile in rural Ukraine using one OSINT tool, Google Earth Pro. Once I submitted my coordinates, and this is the coordinates, and they got reviewed and approved, they were added to the Russia-Ukraine monitor map on Map Hub, as seen below. This is a screenshot. The map has now been moved to eyesonrussia.org and I can show you. I already searched for the exact one. So this is it. This is the telegram message. And if you scroll down, you can see the coordinates that I found. They have been approved. Credit CR because I work for them. So this is it. And then if you just unclick that, this is all that's been happening in Ukraine. Wow. Scary. Some geolocations are not as hard as the first seam and some look extremely easy until you realize that they are not. <laughs> Either way, it's always worth giving it a shot. You might surprise yourself. I hope you enjoyed my journey and I hope it was a useful learning tool. You don't need many fancy tools, you just need a good eye and loads of focus. Almost anything is geolocatable given enough time. Please don't quote me on this. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Sophia.